Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. This is January 26th, 2024, and I don't know what kind of video I'm going to name this. I, I just don't know, but I'm going to bring you a word at the end of this video that I was going to tag on to yesterday's video, which was, is this it? Or this is it. This is it was the name of that video. I ran out of time, uh, but I do want to bring that to you today. You will be glad you listened to it. And you might want to just fast forward to the end. I'm not going to put in the little chunkies because I am not that skilled yet on editing. So anyway, those of you, yeah. So anyway, that's coming at the end of this video. But I do think you need to listen to the beginning of it because first I want to thank you. I want to thank you because when I read through those comments yesterday, y'all, I was touched. I wept. Uh, I felt unalone, if that's a word, I don't even know. I, I felt like we were a family. I was encouraged. I was emboldened. All of those words, just by reading your comments, please, y'all, sometimes it feels like when you get words or dreams or visions, you feel, and I know maybe I'm alone in this, I don't know, but I have felt alone. I have felt isolated sometimes because the Lord shows us things, and then we think, am I crazy? And truly, my opinion is, and y'all may be wrong as rain, but my opinion is, if you think you're crazy, you're probably not crazy. It's the ones who don't question that that probably are the wackos. Which brings me to the threat I got on an email. I, I was threatened yesterday in a very dark, evil email. So I, I'm not going to go into details about that, except my husband said, wow, he wasn't a very good speller. So we're going to just leave it at that. Uh, so I do pray and I do ask for your prayers of protection upon me and my family. There's some, yeah, so just leave it at that. Uh, and, and we're not scared. I'm not going to back off. But um the dark is really dark, y'all. The dark is really dark. I, And I'm a little bit naive in that regard. So, I'm just shooting straight with you. That's me. So, uh, anyway. Let's talk about the border. Of Texas border. Y'all, I live in Texas. I'm in the Panhandle. Which is, like, y'all. Texas is big, alright? I'm talking 700 miles away from me. It's the Texas border. So, uh, y'all. I don't really know what this is. I'm not sure if it's a diversion from everything else that's going on in the world. I don't, y'all, tell me what you think. This showdown between state and federal, I'm just like, well, is this what we're doing now? Throw it on the pile. That's kind of how I feel. But at the same time, I'm like, you better not mess with us. I mean, I don't know. I've lived in other states and I've visited other states. And y'all tell me if y'all think this is true and right. There's something about Texas, y'all, that's like, maybe it is a sinful pride. I don't know, but it's like it, there is a, there is a, an identity that comes with us as Texans. In fact, many of us, and I, I'm going to risk this saying this, but a lot of us are more loyal to our state than we are to our country. So that's where we're at. I happen to be a daughter of the Republic of Texas, all right? So my family, that means when Texas was its own country, that was my family that was fighting for that and in positions of political power in that. So that's where I come from. That's my in my DNA, so to speak. I don't know what's going down there, but I, I tend to think we're too far out from the election for it to be that big a deal because we've got short memories. So whatever they're planning or whatever disaster's coming, I think it's just got to be closer to the election time. So we'll see what happens with that. I think it's weird just the same. Uh, and I'm like, you better not. You just don't poke us, all right? Quit it, Washington, D.C. Stop it. You, you will not want to rile us. And when we say come and take it, if you know the story of come and take it, uh, that did not end well. That did not end well for Mexico. All right, so think think twice, Mr. President. Think twice. That's kind of how I feel. What do y'all think? <laughs> Maybe I'm alone in that. All right, so let us go on to what else we have planned here today. I do not have any, y'all, I don't know. Like I said, yesterday's video, I was 
um, my whole family was like, what? You, there's how many views? And I'm like a nobody. All right, y'all. I am a nobody. I'm, I'm in my pantry, for heaven's sakes, because there's no room in my house for me to make these videos without getting interrupted. I mean, my son's in there right now using the microwave and making his lunch. And so I, I have nowhere except here. This is the only quiet place I haven't been claimed by anybody in my family. So I've staked my claim in here. So that is me. So why? I It is only by the grace of God. It is only by the grace of God, and I pray, I pray that he is glorified in this. So, because I got nothing, I don't need anything, so I'm just telling it, I'm just sharing with you what's going on with me. All right, now, before I begin and bring you this word, there's something we need to remember about death and Christ and hope and love and salvation. All right, the, the important thing to remember, hang on. And the important thing to remember, y'all, is no matter what kind of crap's going to fly and hit the fan, believers in Jesus Christ are covered and protected by him. And that is what is in the word today. But it is also talking about death, all right? Just a little bit there at the end of the second thing I'm going to bring you that the Lord gave me today. But uh, you filter it through the Holy Spirit and see what he tells you. You need to pray. You need to just ask God what, like, hey. What is this woman saying and what resonates with you through the Holy Spirit and what doesn't? Because I know it's not perfect. I know what I say is not perfect. Some of it I do think is divinely inspired, but not all of it. So y'all got to figure that out. All right. With God, you and you with God, you and him with God. All right. So that's that. I would also like to say that. Some of you are tired of all the prophecies, this, there, that, and the other, and something big's coming, nothing big's coming, and disaster's coming, and chaos coming. I, Yeah, I'm saying the same thing, y'all, I mean, because that's what I'm hearing. If that's starting to, like, bother you, or if you're getting frustrated or discouraged, you need to quit listening to people, and you need to open your Bible and just start reading here. All right? It's so easy. And if you don't like reading, get you a Bible app and just listen to it. All right? That is what you need to be doing. Quit clicking through on people like me who may or may not be bringing you the truth. Now, I am doing the best I know how to do. Uh, you have to discern that through the Holy Spirit yourself, just like I said. All right? Don't trust, like, y'all, be careful who you're listening to. All right? And then if you're sick of it, and I'm really, the message hasn't changed in 2,000 years. So if yeah, this one person comment, I'm so tired, I'm like, you're tired and your lifetime may be, I mean, I'm thinking maybe you're 80, maybe you're less. I don't know. But sure, 2,000, this is the message. This is the patience. This is the waiting. This is the endurance that believers in Jesus have sustained for 2,000 years. So if you're tired over just a little lifetime, you're, you ain't going to make it to the finish line. I don't know. It's going to be hard for you. So anyway, those are my thoughts about some of the comments and the, my encouragements. Get off of YouTube and start re just reading your Bible, y'all. Just start reading your Bible. This is the this is the supreme word of God. All right. Now then, I want to read from Romans 7 and 8. Just a little blip. I'm going to read, start in Romans chapter 7, verse 24. And I'm going to read this verse, 24 and 25. Then I'm going to just skip a verse. Not because I'm proof texting, y'all, because I'm not. But I just don't want to muddy the waters a little bit with Paul's own like story and I want to start and then I want to read the first verse of eight which is like man y'all this is the power verse I love this verse all right let's go Romans chapter 7 verse 24 right in the middle of it who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death who will free me from this from sin and death thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So now there is no condemnation. I'm going to say that one more time. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of life, the life giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The power of the Spirit has freed you from death. And it's freed me if you believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord. There's no condemnation. 
All right, y'all, the rest of chapter 8 is like, like if y'all are sick of listening, watching YouTube, read Romans 8, y'all. You will just, that is a, like a pillar for me in my walk. All right, now, going on to the word, y'all. Going on to what I heard, and I had not heard something like this before, so I'm uh, this. So I'm going to share this with you, and y'all tell me if you've heard it. I've I've been I would be interested in that. These words are kind of different. Uh, so this is from January twenty third, twenty twenty four. So we'll leave it at that. This is from January twenty third, twenty twenty four. My dearest ones. Gather close to me under the umbrella of my love. A mighty protection covers you so that the falling will not destroy your faith. Now, I asked Father, I said, Abba, I've never heard you call it the falling. Can you tell me more about this? And this is what I heard him say. Falling child is my way of showing you what is upon you now look all around you much is falling apart the mightiness of your nation systems chains of supply hearts of men the great falling the great falling away falling out of love with me falling walls of Babel. this falling will continue at times, the fall will be quickly done. At other times, a slow fall. You, my children, will see both. You, who do not fall, but stand. You will see it fall around you, fall beside you. The fallen ones who choose me not will cower in fear as you, my lovely children, my beloved ones, will stand in me looking up, ever searching for one glimpse of my son's face. Do not be shaken as the falling, crumbling, collapsing occurs. You have been warned. You need not fear. Stand rooted in me, bathing in the warmth, the light of my love. Stand near each other, clasped hands, arms around shoulders, for this falling will be lo a long chapter. You are only at the beginning, my dear ones. Wonder no longer what is happening. How much worse can it get? I tell you now, you have not seen the worst of the worst. When you endure those days, you will remember, my God spoke to me. He is near me. He will not fail me, for I am his. Rejoice in that moment. Sing praises among the fallen. Love is your greatest weapon to be used beside prayers of faith. Salvation is yours, my children, bought and paid for. Do not falter or frustrate. Instead, see that now you can glorify me in ways you never knew would come. You belong to me, my lovely ones. Stay true, for I am constant. I will never leave you. I'd never heard him say the falling. That was different. I'm just saying. Y'all tell me, have you heard him say that to y'all? I thought that was like, okay. That sums up pretty much what I'm seeing in the natural. All right. Now, I will bring you this, and um, I'm going to start right here. This was from this morning, and it's very similar to other things I've heard from God. Y'all, I, if I repeat myself, it's only because he's repeating himself. So it, it's not like I even remember what I wrote down. It's not like I'm in a trance or anything. It's just not my own words. So, uh, so this was what I wrote down January 26, 2024. Rejoice, for the kingdom of God is near. Do not let your stubborn pride hinder your entrance into me. I'm going to read that again. Do not let your stubborn pride hinder your entrance into me. Rejoice, for today you have time to prepare for the coming days of hardship. 
Rejoice, for I am near you. I am in you. I am around you. I know all things. You, my children, are mine. I stand guard tirelessly, never, for I never sleep. I know your weariness. I know your brokenness. I know your sorrows. I know. I love. I am the I am. Hear me now. Store your treasures in me. Fear not. The rumblings of war you hear now will soon become deafening explosions. These are the days of quiet fortitude. These are the days for you to hear my truth. For all of this world is lie. I tell you the truth. Build your house on me. Pray like you have nothing left but me. As you do this, gather what you can. Time is short, as you say. Time is slipping away. Make ready for what will befall you. Oh, my dearest ones, what will befall you will bring utter despair to the unbelieving and the unprepared. And on the day of the... And y'all, it was it's just a blank, all right? I, I cannot hear... I don't know I don't know what word that he I don't know that word on the day of the the wails the cries of those who know me not those who did not prepare the wails will deafen you cover your ears to the world open your hearts to me for I speak to your heart love my love for you your love for me will sustain you the death march has begun. The death march has begun. But you, my lovely children, live forever in me. Death cannot touch your faith in me. Death may take the body. But life, my life in you is eternal. Believe in me now, for death comes to conquer. And that was it. So in reading that, y'all, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and just, I, I, I don't even know what I'm going to say, except a couple of things stick out to me. One is there are people with stubborn pride who absolutely will not turn to God, y'all. Sometimes, I, man, I know old people in my life, like, and their kids are like, my mom and dad will not let my, me help them. They want to stay in their house. They're, they're falling all over the place. And, you know, it, you know how old people do sometimes, and I don't mean to be ugly towards old people. That's just how they get, and that's how I'm going to get. But anyway, the kids get to the point where they're saying, I can't help you unless you're just flat on the ground and you can't get help anywhere else until you call me. When you are so broken, you cry for help and will accept help. Then I can do something. That's where we're at now. There are people in this world that sink and you cannot help them. They will not let you. You see the devastation and debris field in their life and you cannot help them. They will not let you. So all you can do is love them. That's your only choice. You know who I'm talking about in your life. People you're heartbroken over. And all you can do is love them and pray. So that's where we're at. We're in that window of time, y'all. I don't know. I feel like Noah sometimes out standing beside the ark while people are ridiculing him and threatening. Who knows what they were doing. But <clears throat> imagine. Imagine after the Lord shut the door to the ark. Imagine what Noah and his family heard outside that door. And I've heard the Lord say we're going to hear wails, wailing of people in sorrow. Have you ever heard someone wailing in grief from a sudden death? Y'all, it's haunting. Man, you just won't cover up your ears. They shut up. I mean, I'm sorry. I I, don't, I wish that I'm more compassionate than that, y'all. I really am. So don't hear that. But I'm just saying that day is coming. And I don't know what that unspeakable day is. I don't know what the Lord is saying. I, he's not revealing that to me. Maybe he is to you. Tell us. So, that's all I have. I'm sitting here listening. I think that's it. 
remember what the Lord tells us in Scripture, that we are more than conquerors and death has no power over us because of what Christ did on the cross. You better get your house in order now, y'all. And I'm talking your spiritual house. Your, your regular house, yeah, do what you need to do. Go get you a couple of cans of tuna, all right? I, I mean, I, and if you can't afford that, then pray. I know you can afford that. But what's most important is take advantage of this period of time and fortify yourself spiritually by seeking God, knocking, asking. He's waiting right there. He's not far. He's a half turn away, a half step away. I'm begging you, turn to him. That's all I have. Comment below. <laughs> That's your voice. That's your voice to my ears and to everyone else's ears. We're helping each other through those comments, please. If you're inspired by scripture, my goodness, write it down. We're going to read it until we can't, until, until all this is shut down. That's all I have. Stay safe, Texas. Stay safe, America. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.